We're discussing sanitary wear for women. Now, this is a topic that I think a lot of people struggle with in general. They struggle with being open about it. They struggle being receptive to it. Some women themselves struggle to talk about it. All right? So just for the purpose of progress and just to loosen everyone up um, with my panel, we're just going to say the key words that are related to women and this particular conversation. Um, it is sort of adult listening, so we hope that everybody's fair in with this topic, but there's nothing embarrassing or rude or you know illegal that we're discussing. It's all very normal things. So with my panel, if you could just help me listen up with the key words. Tampon. 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 We can say that for you. Uh, sanitary pad. 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 Okay. Um, menstrual flow. Menstrual Men flow. Menstrual menstruation. Flow. Yeah. Menstrual okay. flow. Vagina. 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 Yes. Vagina. Okay. And uh, what else would we put in there? Blood. That's going to come up. Blood. 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 That's a gory one. It doesn't pain. To talk about pain. And pain also, yeah. Yeah. At least that's not difficult to <coughs> say pain. So this is just to loosen my, my panel up. Um, <laughs> but of course, you, we need to loosen your ears up because some people really cringe when they hear these words. Now imagine being a woman and imagine that every time of the month, at that time, you cannot leave your house, you cannot go to school, you cannot go to work, you cannot even hang out with your friends. Maybe you can't even see your boyfriend because of how uncomfortable it is to be in that situation. Every woman goes through this because that's how we were created. It is not a crime, it's not a sin that we committed, it's not a burden. It shouldn't be a burden, but it has become expensive and very heavy. No pun intended <laughs> for us to carry this. So tonight we discuss this for the next 50 minutes, and we want your input on this. I know many of you are used to hearing me talk about politics, but it also always gets into politics. We don't have the policy makers or the politicians or the people that implement that, but we are the people that implement what our politicians are supposed to do for us. So we've gone right down to the level where it is face to face, the people that experience and the loud voices that we have seen that have been doing something and saying something about this particular issue. Now, if you know, the price of tampons has incredibly hiked in Zimbabwe. Over this period of hyperinflation that we're going through, yes, we are going through hyperinflation. I don't know what anybody's told you, but it is hyperinflation. And when a box of tampons of 10 has hiked from $4 to $12. It makes it seem as though being on your period is a luxury. Let me introduce our panel tonight. We have uh, Judith Chiangwa. She's the founder of The Girl's Legacy. She's a human rights activist. And, and uh, The Girl's Legacy is an NGO, by the way. And the idea of it is to build capacity of young women and girls through leadership development and mentoring so they can live empowered lives and become models of agents of change in their communities. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. And we also have Sarah Fox. She's the managing director of the Butterfly Cup Company. And she started the Butterfly Cup Company in 2016. And uh, this was a conversation she had with a friend in Zambia who told her about menstru menstrual cups and how amazing they are. So she decided to implement this for our society in a way that's affordable and um, accessible to the Zimbabwean community. And she's going to explain to us exactly how this works. Um, and then with Ernestine Patterson, who's her business partner, they built this together. And uh, Ernestine's actually in here, um, and uh, they're going to just be here supporting, but also talking about how they have found an alternate method that is affordable for all women, not just in Zimbabwe, but across the world. And then we have Melody Chingwaru, Melody is the founder of the Pads for My Sisters initiative, and um, she's a French and Portuguese tutor. Sava, Sava, yes, Sava, yeah, and uh, she's uh, also um, she's basically got this outreach campaign going on to set up uh, female prisoners in Zimbabwe mm -hmm. by donating a kit for them to use, particularly during their menses. The kit will consist of a packet of pads, a bar of soap, and a pack of panties. And I believe you're still collecting. Yes, we're still collecting. Right. And last but not least, we have Ms. Upenyu Makoni. She's a development practitioner, um, communication scholar, and a rights, uh, human rights activist, having worked extensively with civic society organizations in the fields of gender and children's rights, access to information, and freedom of speech. She's a TEDx licensee and the lead organizer for TEDx Harare and the Global Entrepreneurship Week. She co-hosts Politics and Beyond, a political commentary podcast on Capital uh, 26 free and she's previously served on the board of the Harare Mayor's Chair Fund. Welcome to Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. Now ladies, let's talk about these facts, right? This has been a conversation that's been ongoing online, right? As we said, around the the way that um, you know women are struggling right now. So I'll open it and say, 
what are we trying to achieve first of all in this as women talking about this making noise about this and finding solutions do we want sanitary to become free like how they dish out condoms do we want the price to be controlled so that every woman can afford it what exactly are we fighting for here i'll open that i think it's really important that everybody has access to it so if people can't afford one or two dollars for a packet of pads and one packet of pads is not going to last for a whole period you need at least two then there has to be a situation where it can be given freely right. to those that need it and maybe for those of us that can afford it that it is set at a price that remains the same okay so prices all right next i i, I actually <laughs> like the word free um because like you said when you introduced um it is a it's biological for us to go on our periods and it's 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 part of who we are as humans so if there's that opportunity for the pu uh, for, for the for, for sanitary way to be free i think it's it's something that i would opt for um i mean you mentioned condoms i don't even want to to compare condoms and and and, and my pads because condoms that's a luxury and and my pad is not i need it whether i'm angry whether i'm mm. crying whether i'm smiling right yeah Okay, more additions. Melody. I think it ought to be free, really. It's something that's needed. Every month you go through the same process, and if you can't afford, then what? It has to be free. If not for those who can afford, it, the, the price has got to be affordable mm -hmm. for everyone who can afford. At the end of the day, it's different from someone who goes through and buys a condom. For a woman, a pet is something, it's their need. It's something important for them. I okay. think that the price on the price of tampons, pads, menstrual, sanitary wear, it's a tax on being a woman, and that's unfair, and I, to some degree unconstitutional, I'm fairly certain. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I think there should be free pads available, but you know what, it's still, we're still in a semi-free market economy, so yes, let's have some products that are sold at a premium, mm -hmm. but there should be an availability of free pads. Especially in terms of quality, right? Yes. Like when we talk of free, I don't know, um, you're not happy with how you liken this to condoms, uh, Ms. Chiangwa, mm -hmm. but uh, I was saying it because these are things that are definitely not a necessity mm -hmm. in the sense of that every month you need to have sex. I mean, I think it's different to every month you are going to have your period, yes. right? So I think um, obviously there's many arguments about free condoms, and I'm yep. not going to get into that. I don't dispute yep. it. But in comparison, if we were to choose mm -hmm. and say what should be free and what shouldn't. I don't think we should even choose. I think they're both important. But regards this um, this uh, agenda to get uh, some sanitation free, where do we begin? Because I've noticed a lot of you have been vocal on social media, opinion. you've been tweeting away. Um, you know, um, Sarah, you've created the Butterfly Cup, you have a whole organization, initiative, and Melody, you're gathering, right? But this doesn't solve the big problem. Have you contacted members of parliament? Have you actually signed a petition? Have we made progressive steps to get our voices heard, as opposed to what everyone expects women to do, which is to sit and discuss at our little kitchen tea parties and on our WhatsApp groups and here on air, and then maybe half the men that usually listen to our program have tuned out because they're like, mm, that's how she's ready. what actual measures have we taken to get this noticed and actually implement some kind of policy? Um, let me speak. Yes. I, I, when I sit here, I, I look at myself as a as an older woman right now. I remember myself as a as an active young woman in the streets of Harare, uh, marching towards Parliament, demanding um, for such um, requests that we are giving today. Mm. Maybe ten, fifteen years later, um, Parliament. Is, <laughs> I don't want to speak about it because we are going towards an election and I'll be labeled badly. But I'm telling you, they are not committed to our issues. They don't take um, sanitary pads as a, as a priority. It's the, I mean, if, if we look at it as, as we speak right now, we have water problems. And I'm coming to think that if you've got the water problems and then you want to begin to speak about our menses, I think it's, 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 a, it's a whole issue that they are ignoring and we don't like to be ignored. So I'm one of those people that is very vocal about it. And I've always said, like you, you said, the men have walked away. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should sit and listen to this conversation. Mm -hmm. Because guess what? Your mama missed a period. 
and you were you were born mm -hmm. you are part of this mm -hmm. so everyone needs to be involved everyone needs to be part and parcel of this it is not a luxury at all okay to be fair to parliamentarians though there was a few months ago i don't know if mm -hmm. you remember priscilla Mfunga yes was was that she was prevented from entering parliament with pads mm -hmm. because this was the exact same issue she was protesting at the time mm -hmm. that the tax on men sanitary wear was ridiculous mm -hmm. and she was saying we need and we as legislators mm -hmm. need to do something about it so it's not that this issue has not entered the the corridors of power as it were it's that the majority of legislators who are men refuse to engage with this issue which is very very problematic yeah i know that yeah. honorable chassis um, who has uh, come out now speaking very confidently and positively toward this actual initiative. Um, so to say that uh, it hasn't, like you said, entered the corridors of legislation is untrue. It has. Um, and people like Honorable Chassi are trying, you know, in their corner. But it's just that. It's in a corner. But mm -hmm. if we were to decide that we're signing a petition and we went to every single woman that we come across. Do you know how many signatures we get? Number one, we're majority of the population. So mm -hmm. what's stopping us from making real noise about this can and I making you, the ground shake? Can I ask you what happens if we bring in the, 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 the signatures? I've been part of a part, I've been part um, in parcel of a process where we, we, we signed over 20,000 signatures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was taken, they listened to us, and when I go to the shops, it's still exactly the same. So you also want to speak on, on, on issues to do with the retailers themselves. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, they are the ones who own the shops. If they are going to import the, the tampons, which we don't make in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. they also have to get profit out of whatever it is that they are buying. So it's, it's, for me, it's just not the MPs. It's everybody else that needs to be involved in, in this particular case. I think when we speak about um, putting issues in Parliament, it's not just to have them written in a handset, but we want the issues to actually, um, um, you know, we want movement we want to be able to see that girls are going to school because right now as we speak girls don't go to school when they're on their menses because there's no water mm. and that affects a whole process of the education of the girls even in terms of the results of the girls right. but when we speak about results we don't speak about menstrual uh, cycles cycles right so I think for me when it's one thing to put something in Parliament and it's another to to actually activate uh, well, here's some facts, right, of what's happened, right? Uh, when you talked about the protest or the demonstration that was led by Honorable Priscilla Musiara Bimishonga in Parliament, and this was in 2014 of July, right? Yes. And her appeal was, look, let's um, scrap the 20% duty on sanitary wear, and uh, that's what happened. And then in December 2016, the Minister of Finance at the time, uh, Patrick Chinomasa, scrapped duty on sanitary wear. Mm -hmm. He did, right? Yeah. And then um, in October 2017, the prices have hiked by 124%, yep. right? Mm. So this issue that we talk about, and this is my danger with social media, where sometimes we see posts and tweets and pictures and memes and they get circulated and we all get misled without knowing the background. Mm -hmm. And before we take it to um, parliament or to government and say, <laughs> so let's assume that this uh, threat that I have is 100% accurate yep. and that there were efforts that were made. Yep. Now we're in hyperinflation. <laughs> mm -hmm. Who do we look to? Because while hyperinflation is happening, it's not going to wait for elections. It's not going to wait for, you know, a new government. It's not going to wait for a lot mm -hmm. because women every month are still going to go through what they go through. Mm -hmm. So the question then is, we've got things like the butterfly cup. Of course. Mm -hmm. We've got issues that are gathering for women in prisons. I mean, we're not even talking about those that can afford. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about those that are locked up, incarcerated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What about So this is what our discussion is about today. We want to implore you to engage in our conversation. 0717 A comment coming in on WhatsApp here. Ruby, I actually asked my sister to send me sanitary wear. It's sad. Painkillers I use are so expensive. That's Lillian Hatfield. Mm -hmm. and she's brought up an interesting approach. It's two-pronged. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to buy the sanitary way, then you need the painkiller. Yes. Whether it's Mypridol, whether it's Neurofen, yeah. you know, with, what, Diclofenac, whatever you need, mm -hmm. those aspects. Another comment here on WhatsApp. 37 years after independence, girls in our country are still missing out on school because government, mostly comprising of men, has never provided free pads to our girls. I'm a man and I'll never have my period, <laughs> but I know <laughs> but I know that it's a natural, natural process. Um, Please, we remain there. Tell Sirius, let's have free pads. If you need funding, please apportion part of the heavily taxed fuel revenue toward girls. This isn't politics, it's nature. 
I like that. I think that should be a hashtag. This isn't politics, it's this nature. That's from Jeff, um, you know, and... I like that he took possession of that. With, I'm, yeah. I'll never have my people. Yes, he's a man and he's yeah. speaking yeah. as a man, you know. And yeah. I'm interested, you know, because this, he's touched on a lot as well, as I said, you know, but um, again, we put it on government. Mm -hmm. Yet, um, I want to come to each of you now and ask you each what you're individually doing because you're doing a lot and there's a reason you're on this panel today so we do want to educate those that are interested in this topic to engage on it so let's start with you Sarah the butterfly cup thank you yes okay so the butterfly cup is um, a menstrual cup and it's made from medical grade silicon and you only need to have one in um, for 10 years one cup is reusable for 10 years right so it, it provides a really good alternative um, to having to keep getting pads either by donation or, or buying them yourself every month. And so what we've done is to, uh, we've been to, to different ministers and um, they certainly are aware of the product and we have approval from the Ministry of Health for distribution and sales. And what we're doing is hoping to engage with NGOs and to try through NGOs to work within their projects like the Dreams Project or other projects to take the product out to girls. So it will be funded and they will get it for free. And that's... that's so when is this thing. expected to launch or take place? Okay, so we've done a lot of trials yeah. and um, we are in the process now of talking mm. with specific NGOs and I don't want to say exactly which ones in case it's it doesn't okay. come up yet. You don't but want to jinx it. Yeah, I don't <laughs> want to jinx it. But hopefully, you know, I know that their year end is, is sort of now and I know it comes up again in, mm. in February. So I'm really, really hopeful that in the next few months we will start to see you know some some sales and and then buying the product in a, in a bigger numbers you know mm -hmm. not just you know one one sure and that we can really use this as a way of keeping so how much is it now on the market okay so it retails mm -hmm. from me particularly at fifteen dollars mm -hmm. which is out of most people's price range I know but as you said it's, but a it's fifteen investment. dollars over ten years yeah um, which is great and then if it's sell to NGOs obviously the more you buy the lower the price comes mm. but an, an interesting comment that you made earlier was um, controlling the price in in supermarkets or in chemists yeah. and and that is something we can't control so although we have managed to put it out into different chemists around Harare we can't guarantee that it, you'll find it at $15 which is a shame and that's what you need help with to make sure that it's it's, it's monitored. I think it's, well, it I think all be. of us need help with that. I yeah. think that the should, it's what we're talking about, isn't it? It's yeah. keeping a price that is realistic yeah. on, well, on let's all these the, the dynamics of the butterfly cup itself, okay? What are the other names? There's the moon cup. Oh, there's the moon cup, the ruby cup. The there's ruby the hundreds cup. of them. There. Okay, so basically this is a rubber. It's silicone. Silicone, but it feels like rubber, right? Uh, it's okay. very, very malleable, yes. right? It's a silicone cup, and it comes in two different sizes, right? The butterfly yes. cup. And you, as a woman, insert it, yes. and that is what you use and recycle throughout yes. the course of your period every month for a period of probably 10 years, right? Maximum yes. 10 years. Now, even just the science of this, I remember when you and I first met, Sarah, I cringed when you were describing how to use this because yeah. for me, it was so foreign. And I'll open this up now to the black panelists and yeah. ask them what they know about how this could be a challenge in some communities. You can imagine, or not even imagine, because I can't, a rural mother giving this cup to her daughter. We're not even allowed by custom to use tampons mm -hmm. because the assumption is you're going to break your virginity. So let me open up now to our black sisters <laughs> and have them explain the dynamics. It's a fantastic initiative and yeah. cost effective and affordable. But panika mm nyaya. -hmm. Mm -hmm. First of all, hygiene. Yes. Yeah. How mm -hmm. do you wash it? Right. Depending on the community you live in, how accessible is that water every time you need to change or rinse or dip out? You know what I mean? Well, if, if I'm being honest, mm. we need water to live. You need a cup of water to keep the cup clean. Mm. A cup a day. If you cannot find a cup of clean water a day, you're not living. There are some communities that are not living. That do not have <laughs> water. There are many that are not living. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, like we're saying, this is not going to solve everybody's True. problems. Of course. But there are 4 million women in Zimbabwe menstruating 
now. Mm. Of those four million, many of them do have access to clean water. Right. And I think we should be trying to look for the people we can help rather than focusing on the people that maybe we can't help. And there'll always be some we can't help. Okay, let's continue. Uh, the opinions on this butterfly cup and our culture <laughs> in Zimbabwe. <laughs> I, I, I work with young girls uh, from 10 to mm. about 25. And I'm actually trying to imagine holding the cup and I'm explaining to the mothers that, you know, it will take time um, for them to accept. It's a good initiative. It needs to be taught. It needs, you need so much outreach in terms of educating mm -hmm. people on how to use it. And it's not something that will outrightly be accepted because um, we, we need to be unsocialized to believe that our vaginas can actually open and close. Mm. So once you look at that thing, people <laughs> actually think it will remain open like that. So I think it's, it's, it's a good initiative, maybe engage more people. Um, uh, we'll work with the girls, we'll, we'll work with parents um, so that they are able to accept. But I, I, I like the idea. But I think you should, when you were going around ministers, I just wanted to find out if you went to the minister who does water, <laughs> to then say it's important <laughs> to have water for these things to work. So as we are doing work and advocating, we must also involve as many ministries as possible because, um, you know, being a woman, you basically have to work with all the ministries. Yeah. There you go. I Melody. think it's a very good initiative. Um, maybe it could be used for girls whereby they, in the rural areas we're actually using cow dung. Mm -hmm. We actually use pepper for them. And for, for some of them, they actually have got to skip school because they are going through their menses and at school maybe there's no water and they're told not to come through. Mm. So I believe that would be a good initiative mm. but we also need to look at water, will they, be, will they have access to water and at the same time will there be a time whereby they ought to unlearn certain pre-notions uh, pertaining inserting anything into mm. your vagina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, yeah, so this one, we want to hear from you on this one, right? As a, Zimbabwean woman, right? Your understanding of this and what your interpretation is. 0717 7, Comments coming in here. At Hatfield Primary. Okay, no, sorry. That's a different comment. Okay, Ruth. Ruby. Okay, so this one, uh, Lillian Hatfield says, can we not have a pad corner in the clinics where we get a packet of pads, tampons, and painkillers? All right? Mm -hmm. So that's a suggestion. And then another comment here. Good evening, Ravenical. Not all men walk away from such important matters. However, I feel that women can achieve more traction in the issue of free pads for girls or women if they unite, sign a petition, or campaign for this cause, considering that women account for the highest number of our population. Organize a campaign like the one for cancer, etc. That's from Grin. Okay, uh, Grin, I don't know what point you joined in the discussion, but as you heard from um, Judith Chiango, she was explaining how there was a petition signed, about 20,000 signatures, and then I also gave the background about how this was then noted by Parliament. Minister Chinamasa, when he was Minister of Finance, dropped the duty, and because of hyperinflation, the price has gone up. That is constant and continuous. So um, please do keep your comments coming in on 0717 So this kind of, uh, I want to ask now a question around media. Can yeah. I say something? Mm. I resent the comment that women need to unite. What is this that we're doing right now? Yeah. Is it not uniting around a common issue? It is. For all of us? It is, for all intents and purposes. So I deeply resent, because it's based on the notion that women have disparate interests and that's not true. I think if anything's going to unite us, it's this. <laughs> In yeah. fact, we, we don't even need to call ourselves united because it's our, it's our life. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> It's our actual life. I, yes. I actually want to say, you know, every time I go to a funeral, to a sangano, to everything, you know, you, you have women saying, you know, do, do you have this BP tablets? They'll, they'll exchange tablets. Yes. They'll exchange pads. Sometimes they'll even share a towel. Yeah. So I think that is an issue that we, 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 we are saying, despite all the things that we've, we find ourselves in, yeah. this is an issue that actually unites us. Mm -hmm. But I want to, just to... You, you know, there's this, there are these girls. I work with girls every every day of my life. Um, a dollar is is money that they can see once in six months. So the, the reason why I would fight and move for free pads is because they don't even have the dollar, even if you put it at 50 cents. I like the comment that says, can we have uh, corners in clinics and schools where people can actually donate because it's not easy. 
for this for, 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 for a specific population of, of girls who have no access at all. And um, if people are willing to donate, I think it needs to be organized enough to make sure that it's, it, it, the pets find themselves in all corners. But is donation sustainable? No. You don't find people donating condoms, ka? No. This is why I keep said, coming back to this issue of condoms. Remember what I said when I started? It's the responsibility of government. Yeah. Mm. It is their responsibility. Yeah. But I'm taking it from a point where you say it. Now that, you know, we can't wait for them while we are bleeding, mm. right? So while we are, we are waiting for them, we are then saying, Let's find ways. If people are going to do it, let's make sure we do it. Because guess what? It is not easy sure. to be on your period. No, it's not. Yeah, and it's be not. uncomfortable. There are other issues we were talking about off air, which we'll get to. You know, yeah. because women have a whole plethora of issues that happen in their uterus. Okay, and <laughs> there's, it's not just about that one time of, of the month. So we're going to get to that. Zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven. You're listening to Ravenico on Capi Talk, and we're here with you until eight o'clock. And we've got a panel, a full house, um, and we're discussing the various aspects of how women struggle to be. I wrote on Twitter. I said. Women, it's become expensive and inconvenient, basically, to be a woman. And that's completely out of order. And that's what we're trying to, trying to address today. So as you speak of the responsibility of government, uh, Judith, um, Vice President um, Nangagwa, at some point during this campaign by these female parliamentarians to make men understand what we deal with, he, at some point, even feigned ignorance. And he says he doesn't know what these things are when they were put in his face. Pat, he was like, I don't know how they work. I don't know what these things are. But can you blame some men for this kind of reaction because of how our society is constructed? Even now on WhatsApp, I mean, I can see the comments coming in, 0717 I'm going to read some of them just now, but imagine my comments are going to be You'll find one or two liberal men like one of the comments before, but in general, it's difficult. You know, and Temba Mliskwa said, um, he's a... Um, MP said government has got money to buy condoms which are available for free but sanitary wear is not free. Why do you think the government places such a low priority on sanitary wear? Because they are not aware of what we go through per month. Are you really is that an honest statement, Melody? That's true. Every man has might have a daughter, every man might have a wife, every man has a mother. Are we really saying that men don't know? So do, they choose to ignore? <laughs> <laughs> so do they choose to ignore it instead? I think it's willful ignorance. Willful ignorance from the men? Definitely. I think it's lack of education as well. I mean, I think if we educated boys and younger people, then they would grow up with it. But like you've said, we're in a society where it isn't talked about. It is a taboo subject. There are so many social taboos around it. But if we actually said, okay, let's start talking to our children, to the boys, and talking to them about how to treat girls when they have their period, mm. and, and how to look after them, and what's actually happening, and make it from, we might have missed our generation, but at least we'd get the next generation to be much more liberal about the way they think, and actually maybe they will be the ones that, that really turn it around, because men need to be involved. Yeah. I think that's interesting from a cultural perspective, because as yeah. women, we know we sit down and are tete mm. and and we get taught how to treat our men, mm -hmm. right? Before we're even married, by the way. I don't know if men go through the same initiation, no. where they get taught. We get told, we're sensitive. Whereas do men go through the same conversation around how to treat their women? And that's a very interesting point. To you, it sounds practical. But yeah. in our culture, Sarah, as we No, but, but honestly, <laughs> really, really, I don't think it's just your culture. Yeah. I think I've got four daughters, and I can tell you wow. that they are not going to say that every boy out there that is in our culture, or my culture, treats them well. Mm. It, it's, not, it's global. It's not only cultural. Let's just get the women in parliament. I, I, I mean, for me, the... Why are you not in parliament? Why am I not in Parliament? Mm. Because right now, I'm gathering information out there that requires me to represent the women in Parliament. Because I'll tell you something, the energy of teaching men about tampons, a whole vice president, not knowing a pad. <laughs> I think let's just get the woman who knows what it is in there. Because at the end of the day, if I really have to, be, to speak honestly, I don't know the statistics of doctors in this country. I think the majority are men. Right? Mm. I'm sure they know what mm. pads are. I'm sure they know what period pain is. Right? You've and gone so far from my question. Oh, really? Why are you not in Parliament? 
this is not the year that I'm going to sign up for parliament. But I you will. might. It's in I the pipeline. Will. Not I oh, might. Okay. I will. We've got a call on the line. Let's take a call on Cappy Talk. Good evening. You are live on Cappy Talk. Hello? 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 Are you live on radio? I'm not getting any. Okay, we lost that. 0717 Call us or WhatsApp us and get yeah, get involved in this conversation. Okay, so um, now we've also got to look at our WhatsApp platform. Uh, we've got another call on the line. Let's take that. You are live on Cappy Talk FM. Mm -hmm. Hi, good evening. What's happening to our phone line? Zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven. WhatsApp comments. Runzi, our culture restricts us from particular solutions. Culture evolves. People must accept that the butterfly cup thing is here. Number one, don't chase men away from this conversation. We've actually tuned in and we're watching online because we care. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. What's his name? <laughs> this is not a matter of. Um, all right. Okay. And then another comment. So should we give up? Um, should we should we give up tumble because it disturbs our virginity? Think being physical is no longer think being a physical virgin is no longer important, but mentally a virgin is. Wow, um, we've got another call on the line. <laughs> we'll deliberate that in a moment. Lost that call again. Zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven. Um, do you want to address some of these comments that are coming in because they're quite interesting? But let's gather some and then we'll get answers at once. I think the pads should be free until age thirty for obvious reasons. That's H Z. That's interesting to put an age cap on it. But then you have to kosha. I mean, pani vataura kupekutanga about high schools at least. Um, and then someone else says this butterfly cup sounds like the answer. At fifty dollars for ten years, it's very affordable. Let's hope the NGOs help us. Let's take a call on the line. Good evening. You are live on Capital. <coughs> Keeps dropping. Don't know what's going on. Um, and then uh, another comment. Prof says, first and foremost, thumbs up on taking the initiative to tackle and talk about this issue. I'm a man, but I have sisters, so I know I have a part to play. I feel somehow it's not about men being ignorant. It has to do with attitude, taking responsibility and making a choice to play a role. Well, mm, like true. True. I haven't yet heard a woman saying, as a woman, I'm appalled by these prices. I mean, where are the women? I mean, are you having a tea party somewhere? Yeah, you know, yeah. this is where the tea party is. I know you want to see people. Like, yeah. yeah. who's, who's funding these things in the household? If you're looking at a budget, if you've got four daughters like she has, and if one daughter uses five packets, yeah. that's five times four, that's $20 that you have to put, right? And maybe she can afford Right. If I have five, five times four, you're still on four dollars. Oh, Which shop are you buying from? <laughs> That's a twelve. All right. Okay. I, twelve. Yeah. So I'm just saying, it's if if you're looking at it from a budgetary perspective, it's a huge cost yeah. for households. Yeah. It's a very huge cost. It's actually more than buying electricity mm -hmm. for the month. Mm -hmm. So it's something that families need to sit down and begin to discuss. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay, I like this. Um, so we're opening up our dialogue, zero seven one seven triple seven triple seven. Um And as you've heard, there have been efforts made by government, by legislators, to implement some kind of movement around this issue. And uh, we are sitting on this panel. We've come a long way in discussing, but ultimately we want to get to a solution. I want to hear from you, Melody, around the women you do with women in prisons. Um, this is something that many of us will never understand or ever see. So maybe paint a picture for us about what the woman in prison goes through every month um for me i started this initiative because i believed that female prisoners um, is a group that's often overlooked in society so for me i thought that in spite of them maybe having some sanitary way of some sort it ought to be adequate for them before all things all thing all things being said then they they're human and for them it should be and it should be something that they have access to mm -hmm. so i thought you know what i want i would love to make a difference in their lives by collecting donations of what i would love to call a kit whereby we're going in the kit would be a packet of sanitary pads a bar of soap hopefully when they do go through their menses they will have access to water and a, pack, a packet of panties. Some women in prisons don't have access to water. Yes, they don't have access to water. So we are trying to so think what that do they do during that time of the month? You're telling us the solution, but we have a problem. Yes. What um, happens? I'm not really sure what really happens on the ground pertaining when they do not have access to water. 
but I'm hoping that some strings will be pulled, that they would have access to water at that point in time during their menses. Okay. Um, this is interesting. We want to hear your input. I mean, if you have any interaction with inmates and you know what they go through, send us your messages. 0717 This is a platform to um, bring these issues to the fore. A comment coming here on WhatsApp. All girls should be given pads for free all the way to high school. This is a necessity. Mm -hmm. um, and then another comment. I don't see why it should be a national issue. They can't be given for free just like food. <laughs> if you want it, work for it. I'm still reading. Sorry. If you wanted work for it, where's that comment gone? I know Zani. If you wanted work for it, poverty and an excuse. Wow. That's from C. He's just signed himself as C. And they shouldn't be <laughs> free. Why is this a national issue? Madzumai. Because women oh. constitute 52% of the Zimbabwean population. And that's why it's a national issue. And if his mother had decided not to go for her periods, he would not be there. Another reason, Sarah? Yeah. And I think also because it's people are dropping out of education and, and that is the next brain of Zimbabwe that you are cutting short. And and that's women have a huge role to play in the future of this country. And if we can't keep them in school, then we are losing that. And, and that is a national issue. Mm. We are not employed. I, I think also maybe think this is where that ignorance comes in. Melody. Yeah. I also think it's a basic right to have access mm. to proper sanita sanitary yeah. way and yeah. to water really it's nothing it's not something that you can negotiate about we know every girl goes through through this it's not something that we can be twiddling fingers about and saying that oh it's not a national issue he's going he's probably going to have a daughter what's going to happen then many kids are dropping I'm out of school shocked that someone would say why is many kids are dropping issue? out of school because of that Many kids have got to go through having to be given pets and at that point in time wait for the people to come through and give them the very same donation. So honestly, really? I think it's a national issue because he's ignorant. <laughs> We've got a gentleman in the studio. Yeah. I'm just going to put him on the spot here. Yeah. Yeah. I really am going to put him on the spot. Yeah. Please come. come. No, I'm really concerned. Really yeah, I'm sorry to put you on the spot. I am. But as a man, right, whether as a husband or a son or a father, what do you say about this conversation? Uh, I think, uh, first of all, it is uh, a matter of national interest. interest. Mm -hmm. uh, I think... Uh, uh, the government should uh, should be advised first of all mm -hmm. uh, um, on the issue and what's really needed for girls because what uh, I don't know your name she's melody. saying melody uh, many many girls especially from from rural areas are dropping out uh, out of school mm -hmm. because of uh, of this uh, issue issue and uh, I think uh, uh, it needs to be taken more seriously. Yeah, yeah, actually, it needs to be given more, more attention. Sorry, I, I wasn't really <laughs> concentrating much on this. I know, so take, 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 take. They're not usually on the mic, mic, mic. I'm yeah. sorry for that. I really no, am. I know, but okay. thank you for your input. I mean, it's, it's just okay. it's just shocking how a man would sit and watch, uh, listen to this program and assume that it's not a national issue. I don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, Baba Nashi says, I think government is not serious. I'm a man. Remember, no, Jiziva, please, let's be serious. Mm -hmm. Another comment from Remember in Hatfield. Runs Ruvenigo, thank you so much much i have repented i didn't know what i was doing i didn't know that i was doing a bad thing to my younger sister i don't even think about it oh that's so sweet shame okay brother yeah another comment here anzi at hatfield primary there was no hit to s okay no um my organization save a life would like to be part of this campaign i'm living with hiv and struggled my menses like i said before that's lily so there's some support thank already you. saying yeah, they want to come you. together. Yeah. Um, so they're going to find you. Melody, where can one find you if they want to get involved with the movement and say, look, let's unite as women and let's find a solution together? You can get in touch on my number 0773-299-630. You can send me an email on melodychingwaru at gmail.com. You can also find me on Twitter at melching91. And on Instagram at Zagato91. Okay. I heard that you caught that information. A comment here. Pads are medically recommended with regards to cervical cancer. These should be free for all. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
And that's interesting because we also don't want foreign items entering the market where people now are then um, prone to illnesses because these things do have to be vetted. So we all have to be careful. Um, here's a marketer. Um, <laughs> okay, here's a comment here. Hansi, I'm a man. Vakad in Dovan Vacho. And he goes on to say, call a spade a spade. The government is letting women down on this issue. Sanitary should be accessed by all women for free. Women are very important. Women wake up, vote for somebody who cares. That person who said women should work for sanitary way is just insensitive. I wish he or she was not born. Good grief. That's Lloyd <laughs> Funny. He's very passionate about that. I think he was just as um, disturbed by that comment as, as we were in the studio. Um, so, yeah. So, let's come back to our panel now. I think, um, you know, globally we discuss many of these issues and it's not just Zimbabwe where this issue is taken lightly, by the way. Before everyone thinks this is a ZANU PF or a Zimbabwe issue, I think it is global. Mm -hmm. um, but as Zimbabweans, we need to find a solution. And uh, we want to hear your solutions. Um, in closing, 0717 We want you to send us your comment as to what you think as women we should do to unite and as men. Because interestingly enough, most of the comments are coming from men. Mm -hmm. And more comments came on Twitter earlier. Um, this is a conversation that Sir Nige started on Twitter. I saw you tweeting away about that uh, venue. Um, he is also sort of sort of just shocked at the prices. He's got a wife and a daughter, and he's like, obviously, this is expensive. Yeah, um, electricity. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so a comment that came on that thread, this is from Atrish Munyoro Janzi, Economic Abuse of Women, mm. when he's talking about the pricing. And then um, one of my favorite tweeters, at Matigari, says they must go and register to vote. <laughs> they don't realize <laughs> the power that they have. <laughs> they don't realize the power that they have. Um, so yeah, look, we've got many different views. And I want us in closing, I mean, before we do, I'll come to you here, Judith, as you tell us a little bit about the work that you're doing so that people know where to find you, so they know where to join your movement and how we can all unite together. Well, as the Girls' Legacy, we run clubs in communities, um, different communities. Um, if you're in Arare, you can find us in Glenview, we are in Gunditiro, we are in Fakose, we are in Glenora, Chitunguiza. Um, we, we, we are also found in different areas of Domboshawa, Mtoko, we are in Gokwe, we are in Bluweyo. Uh, you can find us in Mazoe, you can find us in Gweru. So if girls in this particular communities need access to information, access to a safe space where they can engage, they can look for the girls legacy clubs in these particular communities. Mostly we meet um, on communi in community halls uh, during um, weekends or sometimes um, in different schools so they will be able to access us in this particular area. Some areas we do have uh, for, uh, flyers and posters by clinics where they can actually be able to access us. Okay. But um, the issue is they need to find a safe space where they are able to discuss the issues that are affecting them. The same issues that we're speaking about today, they can also go there and speak about um, sure. these issues. Yep. Okay, and uh, the Herald of the 8th of March 2017 said it is painful that 34 years after independence, women cannot afford sanitary wear and have to use unhygienic means such as leaves, newspapers and tissues as pads. One of these days, female MPs will boycott putting on pads to force government to remove duty on sanitary work. Okay, that's a comment from uh, Minister of Women's Affairs, Gender and Community Development, Nyasha Chikwinya. I would like to take her up on that one. We need to take the pads. No, but they're really not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but can I you imagine them? I mean, look, yeah, but no, no, no. No, we can do that. No, no, Let's I mean, just take you would never do that. You would never do that. I will. You would never do that. I Let's be honest. You. Any woman, can they imagine not... Are you daring me? <laughs> I'm daring you. Okay. But where you. would you do it? Watch. <coughs> no, we need to know. Let's establish it. Where? Would and you, Will you join me? Because if no. I'm never. Never. <laughs> 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 People MPs will boycott <laughs> putting on pants to force government to remove you. Yes. yes. No, guys, there's got to be tidier <laughs> ways of doing this. <laughs> there has to be tidier ways of doing this. What is it? It's free bleeding. <laughs> And oh. if you look it up on so YouTube, like a hashtag. you yes. can look it up. And it's in America, you said a lot where people, yeah, are making a statement. No, and guys, that's out of order. Okay, we can put the pads but like dump them somewhere. Wait. Uh, oh my the God. The townhouse. No. They're giving us the water. What? Yeah. You Gate house. Dump. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yes. Dump. You dump. You use sanitary right. materials. Yes. Right in front of state house. Be, you, because you know what, Ruby, problem. beans are not being collected. There you go. There's no water. 
So we, do you want us to keep these beds in our house, in our homes? Mm -hmm. No, but surely so there's, there's tidier yeah. ways of making. You can throw noise. it out the window at the soldiers guarding state house. Wow! Like, wow! Of, there you go. It's scary. Hey, it's scary when we get to this. It's scary when we get to this. It's scary when we get to this. We should not have to get to that, ladies. We, we are ladies, yes. number one, yes. above yes. everything. We're ladies. Yes. And ladies don't behave like that. Well, when it comes to things like this, our ladyhood is taken. Yeah. We haven't been treated. By so at the end of the day, if you don't treat us like ladies, we don't behave like ladies. Maybe um, <laughs> marching town. We got, we got a comment here. Yeah, 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 what do you want to say? <laughs> Let's just hear that. Mm. What I have to say is that history is seldom changed by well behaved ladies. Oh, oh, oh wow. <laughs> so, so, so you ladies want to be messy Absolutely. and unbehaved? Unfortunately, it's messy right now. Yeah. It's actually messy right now. You don't know how messed up um things are but do you think it'll make a statement i mean you talked about this hashtag already trending globally called mm -hmm. hashtag free bleeding yeah. i mean if that hasn't already reached our borders let alone in-house mm, surely it there's something because kind of some men actually just get they get uncomfortable and they mm -hmm. shun away they don't respect that they just go on and say oh there go those feminists again do you realize that men get irritated by that kind of behavior unfortunately we are not doing this for men we are doing but this. they're the ones that are making policy changes yes so we are doing like, we are, are doing we it for that? policy makers so if there are other men who want to join us for free bleeding they can actually but they join can't us. bleed no we'll make them bleed <laughs> just for the statement <laughs> Let's come to what's up. It's unfortunate, ladies. Those things are not provided for friends in Baba. But I agree with what you're saying. Those sanitary things have to be free. If you look at this issue, girls begin their menstrual cycle at 12, and most of them can't afford those things. So they end up using small pieces of cloth. So as a matter of fact, those things have to be free rather than promoting promiscuity by providing condoms for free. Okay, so there's a very ethical uh, angle there. Um, and then we've got another comment. Oh, Sir Nigel's just tuned in. Hi, Sir Nigel. I know you've been following this conversation. Thank you for talking about it. Really important national issues tonight on your show, Ruby. My tweet was inspired by the missus, really. Of course it was. Hi, Rachel. I'm concerned about how, how situations um, like this affect the majority of people in Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. That's Sir Nigel. I think, um, you know, for man to, to take on, like we said, men should feel mm -hmm. this. If they are living with any kind of woman, be it a sister, a mother, a daughter, it cannot just be a woman's issue. It's beyond that um, at this stage. I uh, see so you want to say something there, um, Sarah. No, I just wanted to say that, you know, I mean, obviously we've been doing quite a lot of work with the Butterfly Cup. And I think what's been interesting is the men's reaction to it. And uh, so many people have, have commented that it, it's reduced the smell in their home and that they can sleep in their beds and their wife serious? is not messing the bed. So it does have, and it, there is a, a buy-in for men to sort That's this really, out. Yeah. Because it's not really that pleasant for them either. And the disposal issue. So this issue was extending to the household where men were actually, so some men can identify with yeah, this, yeah, right? I mean, some people that at that time were having month. this conversation it's with us. Men right. came and talked to us. So we're doing this for you. For the men, well, in a, in a, for all of us. No, but in a way, in a way, they can yeah. identify because it is not just about women. No. I think um, we're beyond the stage of thinking that this is, is a women's issue. And I think if we can agree on that tonight, mm -hmm. as a panel and as as yeah. listeners, and know that this is not just about women, it extends. True. True. I just want to ask mm -hmm. men. And um, a this is your parting shot, by yes. the way, because we've got to wrap up. Perfect. I just want to ask men out there: How many of you fill in that water water bottle to put at her back or her tummy? Oh. How many of you do that? Mm -hmm. If you do that, you're part of this. If you go out to buy the tablets for her, for pain, whether it's your mom, your sister, you're part of this problem. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you went through something as a woman, um, regards yeah, changing your entire life. Um, regards your I cycle. had a fibroid that yeah. was 15 by 2. Yeah. I bled. Every time I went on my period, I would sit in the toilet. For those who have fi fibroids as big as mine, you know what I'm talking about. You bleed nonstop. I bled. So basically five days I'm in the toilet. If you employ me and I'm in the toilet for five days, it means also production is going down. But eventually I had a hysterectomy done um, to correct that because at the end of the day I decided I don't want to go through this anymore. Mm. The pain was unbearable. Sure. Um, yeah. So I did that um, mm. Mm. B because I could not afford... Um, it's actually expensive like that. to have the hysterectomy mm -hmm. done. But it was a yeah. once-off expense as opposed to now having this for the yeah, rest of... Yeah, I had of to pay my mother several months, though. Wow. I borrowed the money. 
But this is what women go through that we don't, you know, some people don't understand. The comment here on WhatsApp, hi ladies and man, and I know what you go through and the government must do something. But giving you for free, I think you're asking for too much. Except prisoners. Remember, it's normal. It's not a disease. Which is an interesting angle. I'm can we talk about oh my god my head is going to <laughs> okay first of all yes it's normal it's not a disease but menstruation has a number of disorders that are associated menorrhagia dysmenorrhea fibroids as, as you've mentioned not every woman has a happy period it's not you know you're not skipping does any the woman have a happy period a lie um telling some do a happy period a happy happy period. Period. There's I think they get happy because maybe they're not pregnant by the guy. Yes. Mm-hmm. But, but not because... No so. Yeah. But it's not a, you're bleeding continuously for a Let's not go into the biblical <laughs> and historical <laughs> connotations <laughs> of why we have this. Exactly. Um, but but it's not a happy period. Yeah. Bleed. And it, it's mentally, psychologically, it, it, it's an assault on you. You have to deal and you have it's to come assault. to terms with this thing that is happening to you. And your Second, body also. And your body your also. So breasts... Ex- the you, exactly. are painful. They're painful. It's a, it's not an easy time. Mm. And then the next thing is that the majority of women in this country do not look and live like us. The majority of women in this country cannot afford yeah. pads in the first place. Mm. So those are the people that we actually need to fight for. It can't just be about the twelve dollar pads. It's also about the free pads. Yeah. So uh, you know because the alternatives, cow dung, papers. Mm. You know, Can you even imagine it, Upenyu? And you, what would you even do with that cow dung? Do you even know how? What comes the old boy? What would you do? Put it in the <laughs> No, we're laughing, but this is serious. You know what I mean? It's it's that shocking that all you can do. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up now. Um, Owen has taken his seat, and it is time for the news at eight. But I want to thank the ladies for bringing this conversation. I want to thank everybody who's contributed to this discussion tonight. I know it's not as exciting as elections and biometric voter registration, but guess what? It is. A woman's life every single month. So um, until we get what we want, we're not going to keep quiet about this subject. And this conversation goes on on social media, so find us there. But thank you for your time tonight. I'm Ravinical. Good night. Be good. If you can't be good, be safe. Free bleeding. Thank you for listening to Ravinical. Thank you for listening to Ravinical. Tune in again next week for more enlightening conversations on.